TJ, I thought a Trans Am for sure, mate. You're telling me you drive a Camry. I, I'm a Camry man. And we're back, guys. We're back with another video. Uh, again, normally we'd be doing rogue actions on a Monday. Cubs is unavailable for a few days. We'll be doing it later in the week instead. If you're brand new to this channel, please smash that subscribe button. We are under 400. 400 subs. That's close. From hitting the 10K mark, something, again, I never thought we'd get. So, guys, I need your help. Rally the troops. Spread the word, please. I would really, really appreciate to help us get over the line. It would be a massive achievement for the channel. Make no mistake. So, anyway, Cubs isn't available today, so I thought, well, what can I do? I thought, let's bring on everyone's favourite flexer, sexy-looking unit who never wears anything but a singlet. Everyone's a winner, ladies and gentlemen, TJ. Hello, mate. Good morning, buddy. How are you? Good morning and happy Monday to you, sir. Oh, it's great to have you here, man. We're up and about. Uh, 3v3s on the horizon. Uh, we, we all know that. Uh, some people are wrapped and other people are going, F I don't care. Uh, it, it's, a oh, pretty, yeah. it's a pretty polarizing game mode for a lot of different people. But uh, obviously yourself, you're, uh, you're one of those theory crafting types, the big brain types that like putting different things together and, uh, you know, putting the jigsaw puzzles together, man. So you're about to uh, jump into your element, yeah? Oh, this is my favorite time, man. This is this is like my Christmas because everything is fun. It's it's all new. It's going to be all new things, and then especially right now with so many new toys and so much new stuff and Omicrons and, and people aren't expecting it, and yeah, and and nobody knows what's going on. So it's all a theory crafter's dream. Yeah, straight up. It's uh, it's up and about. <laughs> There's some fantastic matches just coming through down the bottom. TJ is the same single, 10 of them. Straight up, that's all he wears. I like it. Hey, look. Hey, let me tell you. If I had those pythons, I'd be bloody just wearing uh, you know, singlets say, You also well. do know we do it always on a Monday, right? So this is my Monday year. I'm on my <laughs> sure Monday attire. It is. And yes, Tuesday yes. and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. All right, let's No, get there's to... a black one, a gray one. You gotta, there's <laughs> other colors, guys. I have other colors of the same stuff. Black, so if I'm going to flex, it's going to be black, gray. Universal. Dark charcoal, right. Right. deep midnight. Right. Yeah, they're ah, all the same. Every day, all day, bro. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so we thought we'd do something different, guys. Uh, we have 3v3 on the horizon, and I don't know about you guys, but I, I think we all agree it's been a hell of a long time since we've done some 3v3 action. It's been a while, and a few of us are going to be really rusty. So we thought, you know what? Let's have some fun with this, and let's uh, let's let's. I threw it out to TJ and said, "TJ, mm -hmm. this is your bag, baby. This is this is your bread and butter. This is what you really really enjoy. Give us some help, mate. The the, the community needs some help." So I thought, okay, let's get some teams together that uh, that we're, we're going to talk about GLs to start with, and we're going to talk about possible comps that we're going to see in 3v3 and where we may use them. We're going to have a chat about that. Uh, but we're also talking about some quirky teams, things that are a little bit different to the norm. We, we all know that you can do the standard comps and things like that, but we, you guys know as well as I do, when it get, comes to some of the zones, especially in the back when you're looking for you know something that's a little bit unconventional or a bit of a filler team or something like that, just to complement the roster, <laughs> throwing something in that's just a little bit different that just might get you some banners or timeouts and stuff like that could be really 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 helpful so we thought tj get the big brain out mate and come up with some ideas yep. and and tj's been to work over the last few days and he's come up with a bit of a list uh for you guys so uh let, let's get after it and we're uh let, let's talk let's talk gls to start with let's get into that tj because you know uh, gls mate this is going to be 3v3 and gls mate they're uh they they can be rough they can be rough so to speak i mean they they just go sooner they really do, you know? I think what's going to be, big, it's, I think when it comes to GLs, we're going to see it two ways. Mm -hmm. Either people are going to start putting them on defense and say, hold it up and let's hold the wall. Mm -hmm. Or they're going to try to put it in the back to trick you, or it's going to be all offense. I don't see people uh, flexing a lot of them back and forth. Uh, so when it comes to the GLs, they're, they're going to be utility the knife, but nobody knows what to do with them right now everybody's going to be putting stuff out and, and do I keep them all? Do I not? Because again, it's all brand new again. Yeah, that's right. Spot on. I mean, even th there's even no history to work off yet. I mean, that's the other yep. issue as well, isn't it? Like everyone's going in blind. Everyone's going in completely raw. No one knows what you, your opponent's going to set. And I, and I think that people will be a little bit more conservative in the first week because of that. Would that be fair to say? Or they're just going to go just, you know, balls to the wall, throw it all out there, here you deal with it. Like, what, what do you think we're going to see more of 
when, when it comes to matchups? I'm going to tell you, I, I would expect it's going to be uh, bracket dependent. What I mean by that is Kyber one, I think you're going to see pretty much the same stuff because everybody has all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Kyber two is going to be, it, it's going to be basically like an, a no holes barred and you're going to see different ways and different setups. Yep. Um, because if you've got six and they've got five, that might be the time to let's throw it out there. What are you going to do against this? Because there's all, there is still a lot of counters if you know them, but if you don't and you don't know what's going to happen, it can catch you off guard. And if that one catches you off guard, it pushes you down the spiral because you're not going to clear that zone. Maybe. Yeah, that's it. I mean, clearing zones and, and of course, you know, a lot of the time it may still come down to fleets, which, you know, that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> yeah. It really is. We're not going to go down the fleet direction because, you know, fleets are a show. They really are straight up. So we're not even going to cover that today. Let's just cover teams uh, because, you know, if they can't even get to them, well, you're already ahead. It doesn't really matter. So yeah. let, let's let's start talking with Galactic Legends. Let's get straight after that, and let's start with the right. big one. Let's start with the big one. Let, let's start with Lord Vader. Uh, so we, we, we've obviously seen this. We believe that we're going to see this comp a fair bit out there if you have Lord Vader, uh, Maul, and Royal Guard. But but Lord Vader is going to be really a little bit of a, uh, a mix and match. We're going to see a lot of different variations of Lord Vader out there, especially now we've got Inquisitors, yeah? I, I think... Lord Vader is going to be one of the biggest utility knives and, and probably one of the best 3v3 Galactic Legends out there. Yeah. He will take out everything by himself. If you want to throw teams with him, you can throw Inquisitors, right? We have brand new Inquisitors. We have new toys to do it. Everybody's doing Maul. Well, Maul could go on a team on his own. Mm. You could put so much stuff with Vader. You could put nothing with Vader. This is, is just a start of it. But if you've got Vader, you're in a very good place because he can basically take out every single thing out there. Yep. So as everybody would say, he's, he's not good. All right, well, you wait and see, and you go and throw him on defense or you put whatever you with them in and you put nothing in. Either he's going to hold your stuff and he's going to hold everybody up because what happens if you load him and then he just takes you out and then stops your turn meter and does everything else. So I hate to tell you, watch out for Vader. Vader's going to be a monster when it comes to 3v3. Yeah, straight up. So there you go. So there, there's some uh, hints there. So Lord Vader's gift definitely going to be the X factor, especially in, oh, in week one. He's awesome. Especially in week one. Uh, so let, let's move down to Kenobi now. Uh, Kenobi, of course, uh, he we, we believe, of course, James K. Cat is going to be a big, big push. And then and then basically we put Mace in this lineup, but really it, it can be plug and play. Anything Galactic Republic you can chuck in here, right, if you really want to. <laughs> I, I call Mace. Mace is in there just to be in there as a Galactic Republic. It's JMK Cat, right? Yeah. And then almost anything you would put with JMK Cat is going to do his job on yeah. defense. If he holds, that's going to be a nasty one that's going to go out on offense. If you have the faster cat or if you have whatever else, that's well, there goes that team right there. So it could be just JMK and Cat by themselves. Yeah. Um, but that third Galactic Republic, Mace is a great one in there. He's going to mess with stuff that's going to uh, stop people and doing their thing. So there. <sighs> It's a utility knife again, man. There's just, where is it going to go? Offense, defense, and then how do you do it? But, of course, it's JMK Cat all day. Yeah, all day, every day, straight up. Yeah. You can use any any Galactic Republic Jedi in there or you know any Galactic yeah. Republic character. You're up and running for sure. Uh, so, yeah, so we think that we'll see that. All right, let's, let's, talk, let's talk Luke. Let's talk Galactic Luke. Uh, so let's have a look at this one. So uh, we, we put in uh, JML and, of course, Grandmaster Yoda and Jolie. Now, GMY... I mean, you you were talking off camera before we started today. A fast GMY is going to be pretty important in this lineup if you run this one. I I, th- I think what people run is about three ten to three fifteen. Well, now what if you bump it up to three forty and you give it the forty speed and he's just going and going, and then you have Jolie to do the revive right, and then they're continuing to push. That's going to one speed up the ult because it's trying to go through and you're pushing off the coins and he's doing all that. Mm-hmm. Well, you're just never going to stop, right? Yeah. I know the other people want to do like uh, what is it? Uh, um, Bass Lee, JML with Watt. That was one of the old school ideas. But 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 I think JML, man, leaving me alone, especially when you get to the Relic Nines and the things like that, is, is going to hurt people. I think it's going to be an underrated. And I, I, I know I'd expect a back team or a back wall team or something like that. That's being You're going to see a JML sitting there. It's going to be like, all right, well, I got to make sure I have the right stuff for it. Yeah, spot on, spot on. So, yeah, interesting one. JML, pretty solid. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Fast Yoda is going to be the key. Um, just to get up and running, yeah, and just spread yeah, he's gonna around. be he's gonna be nasty on yeah, that team, absolutely. Um, Sith Eternal, 
Uh, we, we put in, of course, uh, Malik. We put Malik in this lineup. We think that we're going to see a little bit. Malik and Sith Empire Trooper. Uh, we, we've got them in there. Um, we only uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, of course, we both had a chat and, and we took Malik to Relic 9. Definitely not disappointed about that in any way, shape or form. Um, you know, he's certainly, again, pretty plug and playing with Malgus on the horizon um, down the track as well. Could be a bit of fun there as well. But uh, in this lineup, uh, basically, you just, you know, you just want Sith Eternal to go. <laughs> you just want him to taunt and not get a turn, right? Yeah, C is going to be another one, man. On on defense, if you're seeing it on defense, I know people are asking in the chat right now, offense or defense. This is really going to flip either way, right? Because yeah. I think that's going to be uh, team and mod dependent uh, or a comp dependent. Um, if you're putting C on defense, Malik is 100% needs to be in there. You don't put C without Malik on that team. Um, and I think it's going to do a lot of uh, a lot of damage. On the offense side of things, C by himself is going to do a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, same thing. C Watt, C Armor. These are all going to do a lot of good things. Um, and, and so even, this is just and giving you guys an C idea. Solo. But it, like even C it Solo. Yeah. Oh, C Solo is going to be great. That's what I mean. It's it's this is these are just ideas, guys. But for usage, you're probably going to see a lot of C Solos. Like if we're going to see gas on defense. Yeah. You're going to have your C. Six. Uh, if, well, Oh, jeez oh. Louise. Oh, I came up through 400%. Damn it, catastrophe. We're recording right now. I'm sorry, everyone. God, oh, scared the crap out of me. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, He's going to be the way to go, man. He's going to do a lot of stuff for you guys. So that's going to that's gonna do a lot of good things. So don't don't sleep on C. He's going to do a lot of But if you're doing it on defense, it needs Malik 100%. Do not put C without Malik on defense. There you go. And, and a high health. Uh, Sith Eternal as well. Like you want a lot of health in him, yeah. Two ten, the two ten is a good one, right? I know Popes has a two fifteen, and I think that's amazing. Yeah, about four seventy speed and and two ten health is what you're looking for. Um, that's usually the R nines, but that does that will cover everything you need uh, throughout the game. Yeah, gotcha. No worries, all good. Uh, let Let's talk Ray, uh, the uh, the bane of three v three existence early on for quite some time. She's rough in three v three. Uh, we've got Armour and Hermit Yoda thrown in there, a team that was pretty yeah. popular last 3v3 running around. At the end, yeah. Yeah, that, that was really, really popular. Um, just just basically to just make her as indestructible as possible. Um, that That's really what it's all about, isn't it? It, it is, and actually there's there's a couple ideas. So I've also, while well, I'm coming with my own stuff like that, but I've been watching all of the, the streamer stuff and, and do like that. Solo, I think, came up with a really awesome comp of uh, um ray uh was jkr and joe lee mm-hmm. taking out jmk cat i i think ray is even though they're the original is still a menace yeah. and if you leave her alone she's gonna eat you alive yeah do not underestimate your ray so stacking her up like this is gonna be crazy right but the comms that we saw i mean she runs wild right han and chewy were the old school classic um l3 and bandor was another one that people did IG and Quill. It's it's basically light side and what do you put with her? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So straight up. So Ray's just gonna be gross. Ray has always been gross in three V three. Hate to tell you guys, news flash, it's not gonna change. <laughs> so, no, it's not gonna change. So have fun with that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. moving yeah. right along to our last GL, uh, of course, Kylo. Uh Kylo's the last one on our list. Uh, we've put Hux and crew in here. Again, there's a couple of different combinations you can use. We were talking, depending on how you want to use it in attack or defense. Uh, but, but of course, you know, you even mentioned Night Sisters as a good option for this lineup as well. That's that's another classic. That is the that goes to me aligns directly with like the Rayhan Chewy, right? Yeah. That's okay with your Daka and your Zombie. Nuts because it is such a pain to let it go. But S O K on offense, right? S O K and Watt takes out. We'll take out everything. It doesn't matter what you're going to do. It's it's going to beat you. And it's going to pun- punnel everybody down because he's just going through. Especially at the top end, the builds with the 150k health and the speed, is, is, it is crazy. But yeah, SLK, this is a staple team. Just showing out the ideas of stopping the turn meter, uh, uh, especially with like a Relic 9 crew or those, those heavy crews that are out there. They're just going to sit there all day. Yeah, they're going to be gross. They're absolutely yep. going to be gross. All right, so that's the GLs covered. Let's get to the fun teams. 
Uh, and these are, right. make no mistake, these are fun. These are some quirky teams that, uh, that TJ's been theory crafting, uh, just to yep. give you guys an idea of something just a little bit different. Uh, so these are the teams that we, we're going to run with. And the first one I've called Secret Plans uh, is the first team that we're going to run with. Uh, Akbar, Leia, and R2 um, is the lineup there. Um, now, these are, this particular team, we're going to cover the ones with the Omicrons first, guys. So all of these ones we're discussing with Omicrons. We do have a list for non-Omicron ones as well coming soon okay so stay tuned we're not done yet it's not all omicrons but we're going to start with the omicrons first so so omicrons here you're looking at uh, akbar layer and r2 uh, talk us through this this concept man because this one i looked at and i've gone and what yep all right so so i think and and what it was and i like the challenge so so for everybody else uh what Heinz did was said come up with teams that not everybody's talking about so all i did was started looking at kits and looking at teams and concepts um, and, and what I came back with and what I think is going to surprise everybody is these Omicrons that most people are utilizing, uh, AA and Leia, people were using it and it's a, it's a vicious team on fives. Well, now if you stack it down to threes and if you look at the kit, the idea behind this team is that if you have the Omicron on AA and Leia, you make R2 the fastest character. So we'll say 330, 340. Put Leia behind her because people were doing 320 or something like that. What it is, is R2 is going to go and stealth everybody. That's going to have everybody go. Leia will immediately go after that because she's already stealth. She's going to wiggle and then she's going to start damage right into it. It's 100% from that back end. And then because you're doing that, you're also calling R2 because it now calls the weakest two characters. Well, there's only other two people on the team. R2 is going to go through and stun everybody. And the damage impact that you're doing from Leia, that tie-in is going to be huge. So putting everybody together and doing it this way, it's going to be fast and it's going to damage everybody. It's going to lock it down. I like it. I like it. One that, again, I would never have thought of. Make no mistake. Right. But you're going to need the Omicron on Akbar and also Leia, correct? You're going to need it on both of yeah, them. Yeah, you, you, you definitely want both of them to do it. This is a, a two Omicron team. But as, as you'll see, what I came through is – there are multiple ways to use this. And because of the speed, Leia is going to push that team around. And then you're putting in that right third. And you're going to see, I came up with multiple ideas, is is great. This this team is going to be underrated for sure. Sure. Yep. Okay. So yeah. So we do have a couple of Akbar Leia combinations because there's a few yep. that TJ came up with. So it's not just R2, but this is the first one they come up with. Uh, yep. we, we then have the Rebel leaders, and I know there's a lot of fans out there right now, and they're going to absolutely be really angry at me right now because of one of the characters in this lineup. It's low gear, and they're not going to be happy about it. So Rebel leaders, uh, Akbar, Leia, and right. Fulcrum. Um, yes, so, once at gear twelve. I know. I'm sorry. I'm getting there. It's a. It's it's a. Uh, to, it's on my to do list. Uh, and and mine's R five and Zeta now because of this. And, <laughs> and here's the concept behind the team. the The idea behind the idea. Uh, the idea behind this, right? And what we're looking at with with uh, with Fulcrum and doing that is the tie-in that she's going to continue to utilize all of the buffs. If you look at the kit that ties it in, every time you're utilizing the buffs, that's reducing cooldowns and pushing the speed. So that's the idea behind this. You're ripping apart the buffs, you're coming back, you're just damaging it, and you're just going to keep going in a vicious circle. And the idea behind Fulcrum is just that damage on damage contact, and the Zeta gives it down to three stacks for her to pull back. That ability is going to be nuts. Yeah. So watch out for this team too. This is another good one. I like it. So any Fulcrum lovers out there, and I know there's a lot of them. Hirsch is one of them. Dude, Urs, Urs, one. Urs, go old school. Everyone, Urs, like anyone, love anyone that loves a bit of Fulcrum action, you're going to be pretty yeah, happy in three minutes. nuts three. on this team. Yeah. And remember, Omicrons are needed. Omicrons are needed for that team as well. Don't forget. Uh, let's let's move to a, a new Hope team, Akbar Layer and CLS. Uh, so again, this is a, another combination of Akbar Layer that you've come up with. CLS mm-hmm. is an interesting one. Only because he's just so useful in a lot of other places. Um, right. I'm just, how, how can we justify taking CLS and putting it in this lineup? That That's probably the question, TJ. That's what I'm a bit unsure about. All right. So everybody wants to use the stuff, right? But what if you have nowhere to place the other things, right? And you want to do something different. Mm-hmm. Now you tie in a CLS on this team who's getting tenacity up and Terminator like crazy. And he's already got the Terminator over. Mm-hmm. Anybody who played it. So I actually played this team and I tried to use a Star Killer one against the 5v5 and it, I almost lost. I basically got done with like a 53 or something like that with Star Killer because the team is just a menace. Now you tie that in with CLS and you go with something different that is going to go out there. Expect Term Meter, they're going to just cycle around you. And if CLS is stunning everybody and taking away Term Meter and you have Leia doing all the damage, what are you going to do? 
So, so the idea is just, it's a simple yet dangerous team. And it's just something different that where you want to place it Uh, again, the Omicrons are doing the work that nobody's expecting what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I think it's a team that could be easily underestimated. I think that's the thing. Oh, for sure. And I think, you know, there, there's not for great. Sure. You know, the synergy there is okay. It's not great. You know, CLS leader would be better. Everyone would be thinking just immediately, like, you know, the general right. public. But, yeah, this one definitely could creep up on you if you're not careful. I, I see that for sure, definitely. Uh, Yavin 4 lineup I've got next, guys. Akbar Leia and Scarif. Scarif Rival Pathfinder we've got in here as well. Um, you know, Tank's a king. We know that. Uh, thoughts on this one here, uh, TJ? So, talk to me. So, so the idea is again, we're using the combo of the Omicrons to do the work. And if you're always calling in SRP and he's always buffed, all he's going to do is continue to die. He's going to come back, and then he's going to give up speed up. Mm-hmm. The team's already getting speed up as it is. So if he's continuing to do that, you're just feeding in your team more and more. And if she's stealth, who else are you going to hit? You're going to be going after SRP, and if he's going to keep tanking on you, yeah, it's just going to continue to make them faster and faster. So the idea is you're basically just using a glass cannon, Leia, to just shoot the uh, shoot out everybody off, and then they're going to be done. And then what you're going to get behind left with that is just going to be nasty. I like it. I like it. Uh, okay, so the reason that my fulcrum sucks right now is because I was investing in something else that I thought was more important. The Lakabantha team, Lakabantha. Tuscans, Tuscans, straight up. Uh, it's pretty obvious. Not in this order, of course, or it could be in this order. Uh, but uh, yeah, so mine are relicked up. Omicron is going to go on uh, for mine. Uh, probably actually during this stream, we're, we're filming this live right now on Twitch, of course. Galactic Legend Heinze, don't miss it. Hell of a lot of fun. Uh, but I will be, uh, I'll be chucking an Omicron on before this stream's done today on this one. I think this is one that uh, is, it, you know, it's, it's built for three v three. Make no mistake. It, it is, and if it's, I think it's going to be mod dependent. So the, the tie-in or something that would be equal to me would be like Ewoks. Um, it's going to be mod dependent on how you build it, but I think this team is going to be a pretty big staple when it comes to threes because this is not a threes team. This is a fours team, yeah. um, and that extra character, that's it's kind of like ships or anything else. You get that extra character out there, and you continue to be stuck behind it like a nice sister zombie or, or whatever else is going to be is going to be gross. And they're just going to sit there. So I, I think people are going to um, miss this one and not really think of it and underestimate it uh, for what value it has. Uh, I think it's going to be a big one. I like it. I like it. We're, we're getting thrown out there back to the Akbar ones. Akbar with Han and Chewie. Yes, no, maybe. Or is Han and Chewie more useful somewhere else with scoundrels or something else? Uh, Han and Chewie are, are, are a pretty big staple. And, and again, the idea, because, I mean, if, if I want to go Han and Chewie, I could put Dash. Yeah. Dash is a big one that's going to be under there that people uh, will look at. Well, you can't stop them. Well, Dash is just going to eat you up. So there, I think Han and Chewie are a big one. What I wanted to go off of, and especially if you're looking at the Omicrons, is is what's underestimated. Something that's not – if you see a Han and Chewie, you're already going to know it's going to take a lot in there. Yeah. Um, so the idea is there, there's going to be a lot of different ways to play it and what people aren't going to think of. Yeah, that's right. Unconventional. That's what it's all about. You got to think outside the box. That's all I came up with. Because if you think outside the box, then your opponent's going to go, what the f*** am I going to do now? And that's the whole idea of 3v3, especially in week one. Uh, Because, you know, you need to pull out all the stops to outthink your opponent. That's just what it's all about these days. Yeah. It's mind games. You need to outsmart them. Um, You got to big brain them. And that's what it's all about. Uh, The next one is one very dear to my heart. Uh, And this one, again, will be one that I'll be Omicroning before the end of this stream today uh my boy mendo my boy mendo the my achievement team all right so the idea behind this this is this is everyone this one is is, so this is this is the (laughs) make krennic great uh, again team and i think people are going to completely underestimate krennic Mm -hmm. and threes this this omicron is built for threes and i think people are going to miss that and they're going to underestimate this team. So, so this is one of my little pride and joys that I came up with. And I had to tell Heinz, Heinz, what if I could make your credit great? And that was a, I know that sparked a big thing for him. So the idea behind this team is It's my boy, is Ben that, Mendelsohn, it, mate. It's an Aussie. He's an yeah. Aussie. Of course I want him yeah. to be good. And, and I know there's a lot of time people wanted to make him good. And yeah. how do they make this well? Well, yeah. the fact of the Omicron that you can one bypass Tom, but here's, here's the piece that's the kicker with Nine Sister, right? If you make her the fastest and she does her days, which you can't get past, Mm -hmm. and you're having Krennic and Death Trooper build, then the very next move, they're going to stun whoever you want because the days is already there. And you're already controlling the team. 
And because of that special damage, that gives them more time for them to ramp up. That's ability blocks. You're going to lock them down with whatever is coming. So this is one of the ones that actually is a, a very one that I like a lot. And for yeah. anybody, I would recommend highly. If you have your ninth sister and you have all these people built up, put the Omicron on you. I do not believe you will be disappointed at all. I like it. I like it. And to build on that as well, the Scarif Troopers, we chucked in here as well. So Krennic, Death Trooper, and Shaw Trooper. Uh, the, the boys from Scarif. Uh, we put that in there as well. Uh, the synergy is just good with this team in general. Even better now with an Omicron. Well, and even if you think about it, right, because the crits are going to be there and the, the crit avoidance and having this, the turn meter up is going to be there. So a lot of it is going to keep this. And this is not the whale. So what I wanted to go off of was something that was more friendly. Everybody's going to have short trooper. Yes. And no one knows where to place it. We'll put the preton in there and then let them do the work. And then that's just going to allow them to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So interesting. All right. Now this one, this next one, this next one. All right. Sounds good. We're on it. Mrs. TJ. We're on it. <laughs> Okay, so straight up. How uh, goes when you're live? <laughs> hey, anything happens when you're live, guys. That's how we roll here. All right, shock prod resistance. Yes. Rose is getting some love. God help us all. Um, all, right. all right. Finn, old school Poe, and Rose Tico. Now, everyone's going to go, I lost Ro- you know, I lost the Rose Omicron on a bet or something like that. Big shout out to Cubs. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the Rose Tico Omicron, actually, as you can see, is, is one that I've put on. I've put that on now uh, because it's going to come in useful in 3v3. Um, yep. So, TJ, convince right. everyone this out one there I, how Rose is going right. to be good, please. I'm I, I telling you now you guys are going to sleep on Rose when it comes to threes and watch what she does in a team like this. If you have a team up, and I'm going to go old school, you take Poe and you're going to make him up really fast. 330s, 340s, whatever you can do, you're going to land all of the dazes or uh, excuse me, all the dots, and you're, you're putting out all of that exposed, and it's going to be great. And as you're poking that, Rose will give more tree meter, and the fact that what she does is uh, she's going to stun you, and then she's going to daze you. And while Finn is doing the same thing, and they're removing turn meter while they're giving themselves turn meter, that combination is going to be nasty. Do not sleep on this team. I'm telling you, anybody who's got that Rose Omicron is going to be very happy with this setup. I'm still not convinced. I hear where you're going. I, I'm oh, no, still we not bet sure. On it. That's the good, best thing about it is we bet on it. I know. And that's why I'm ready to prove it wrong and watch what I say. Or have you built it the right way and watch. It's going to be a vicious circle. I'm still not sure. I, I, I'm running with mm-hmm. it. I'm running with it straight mm-hmm. up. Uh, uh, so, all right. Now, let's let's move on now to... Uh, look, I've called this uh, Zasta Malik. Uh, right. So, uh, this is... Uh, Obviously, Star Killer. We know that everyone's gonna. A lot of people, the majority, are gonna put it with EP Mara Jade. Like that's just gonna happen, right? In a lot of cases. But if you want to use EP Mara Jade somewhere else, this is another viable option. That's still gonna be really, really gross. Is it more defense or, or offense focused? I'm assuming more uh, offense. So, so this Star Killer is a utility knife. He can go either way. And, and what I wanted to do is show just another idea because of the idea with. Uh, you know, getting got changed and, and star killer got changed is that this can go a whole bunch of different areas. Yeah. Right. Um, and so looking at it, this, these three together are going to be a menace um, because Malik is going to continue to mess with everything. He's just going to sit there and allow star killer to do his work while he's in there, even if he's not going. So eventually it's going to happen is, and then with, with Barris there, she's going to continue to, to give life back. And then it's just going to, it's just go over and over and you have to get the star killer what are you going to do yeah if everything is going up that way so it's 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 going to be a nasty team that may or may not be seen by a lot but again this is one if, that if, if you come up go against either it, way if, if you put a lot of gels and stuff on defense and you're a little bit shy and you see this in the back you're gonna have a rough day um that that's just a definite 100%. And you have EP Mara Jade for something else now. Yeah. Offense or defense, that goes a different way. And it's something that where everything else is going, what are we going to use on it? I like it. I like it. All right, so there are Omicron teams that we come up, our quirky Omicron team so far. Let's talk those that don't have the Omicrons because we know that a lot of people, it's just they're tough to achieve. And look, let's be honest, farming Omicron sucks unless you've got a bank balance, right, with uh, a healthy bank balance and a card to match. So uh, that that's basically where we're at. So let's talk, let's talk some non- Omicron 
teams to put together. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna start with Basti Phoenix. Uh, Basti Phoenix is one that was thrown out here. Uh, TJ, if I'm correct. Uh, yeah, this is one of my staples that I, I I I'm giving it away. All right, so. Anybody who's built up their Phoenix, um, and, and again, uh, Heinz, should be ashamed of himself to look at Ezra and, and Kana so low. Um, I know. The, the time for this, yeah, you really need to really be ashamed of yourself. Uh, <laughs> with, with the Zeta especially, right, when it comes to Ezra, Ezra is your damage, and he's going to continue to ramp. Mm. Kanan, who is really the staple when it comes to ideas with D-Bus and everything else, and the fact that he gets to sit there and he gets foresight, this team will take out a lot of different stuff. Um, uh, this is my like Jedi utility knife almost, right? Because you built him and where do you use him? Well, Bass with this and, and especially Bass really doesn't have a home when it comes to JKR is already going to be with either GMY usually or Dilly. Yeah. This team does so much and can take out so many different things. And you have the overage with the, uh, 300%, uh, protection, and, uh, et cetera, that allows you to make mistakes and still get full banners. I like it. I like it. Uh, a, a ripping team there. Uh, next one is yeah. the uh, the Junk Color Troopers. Uh, Moff Gideon, uh, Death Trooper, and Storm Trooper. Death Trooper is getting a bit of love here. Non Omicron. Um, so you know, certainly if, if you haven't got uh, the Omicron on uh, on Krennic, like we were talking before, right? This is still going to be super super gross. Well, and, and I think who used or uses or knows really when it comes to Gideon's uh, lead, right? Yeah. The, the fact that it's brand new for everybody again is because nobody's really using it. And the other piece that comes in, especially if, the, if you have the Zeta on Stormtrooper because you build them up for something else, is he ties in with the, the Imperial Remnant. And what that ties in with Death Trooper, who actually is another Imperial Remnant. So putting these together is going to ramp your Stormtrooper up. And that's going to tie all back in. And the fact that you're going to come back alive after somebody dies and you're controlling the team, damage reduction, dazes, stuns, death, uh, uh, death mark. This team is going to be gross and one that most people we either not know what to deal with mm-hmm. or won't take in enough. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Let's move into the the last few teams and uh, and of course a lot of us, as we know, are, are farming inquisitors and they're they're a heck of a lot of fun. Um, you know, they're 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 a nasty investment, huge investment. Uh, still not one hundred percent convinced that in the end. They're, they're going to be absolutely brilliant. Yeah. We, we expect they will be, but we know that they're built as a, a territory war focused faction. So that, that certainly is, is going to raise some questions when it comes to, to GAC in general. We, we certainly need them to be quite viable in this game mode. Uh, that would be correct. Yeah. And, well, and that's what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to bring something that everybody's been building their stuff up. So one more of the Whaley because it's newer still. And then one that would be like something that could go defense or offense. And one that I would go more towards offense if you have it. Right. And it'll make sense when you see it, when it ties in. Let's start with the Purge team. Purge team's the first right. one up. Fifth brother, lead, seventh yep. sister, and ninth sister. You've thrown this one out there. So is this your offense team or your defense team? What do you think? This one I think is going to be more of the defense because it does its work on its own. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can go offense as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the idea and the concept is fifth brother's lead is probably one of the best. And I've heard it from a couple other streamers as well. And, and I would agree. Uh, fifth is going to have that better setup and the fact that he cleanses everything. Uh, so he's going to get rid of all the buffs and then ninth sister is going to come in. And especially if you built her up fast, like a lot of people are doing for the end of the last GA yep. uh, with five V five, these two together are going to be gross. It's going to be an awesome team. That's going to lock you down. It's going to take term meter away. It's going to add term meter. And then there's always going to be a lot of assisting going on. Yeah. And Fifth Brother actually goes a lot. Well, that was the thing. And and, and just to give people an idea, you mentioned obviously the Fast Night Sister uh, that's been mm-hmm. built up. What, what type of benchmark should people be trying to aim for? I mean, not everyone's going to be able to hit it, but just give them a ballpark. It's in the, what, the, the you know, early 300s or a little bit higher, uh, like, you yeah. know. 320 is, is, is like my key number I like to use when it comes to Ninth Sister. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, 300 is fine as well. It's just getting somebody fast and letting them do the work because you want that you want that opening days to go out and then stop that team so that your team is just locking them down. Shut them down. Got it. Got it. No mm-hmm. worries. Cool. Now, these are all non-Omicron ones as well because all the Omicrons, of course, are territory war-based for right. the Inquisitors, right? So you don't need the Omicrons for these. They just need to be you know, built up and as, as solid as possible. Last team that we're going to cover... To- oh, sorry, we've got two teams left. I'm sorry. The Triller Purge team is is the other one. So this is more of your your offensive, your attacking team. It, uh, it's going to be offense, yeah, because if you look at Second Sister, the she's got the offense set up in her lead, yep. and that's going to ramp it. Well, these two are basically going to be assisting everybody 
while they're going. So every time you go eighth brother while he's uh, while he's stealth is going to assist. Seven sister will be assisting on the crits. So all of these work in because of the purges, and that tie-in is going to go with the speed up, the turn meter reduction, and then the control. So that's that another one that will be great for control when you're doing it to them. So mm-hmm. that yeah, it's offense. And any any modding tips on on this particular team with these characters? Any anything that you think really needs to be something that's important to make it work? Um, so second sister is going to be more towards the offense base. That's more of that. The actual damage is going to be from her, even though she has the lead. So time with offense is going to be a good one than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, seven sister, eight brother, really fast is going to be probably the idea. Um, seven sister. I like the three thirties range, uh, for her and, and yeah, beast. I saw yes. Another three thirties when it comes to them. <laughs> um, but, but doing the control and then eight is for durability in my opinion, because of the fact that he's stealth, we just want to keep him in stealth and keep that going. And what he's doing, because the actual damage second, uh, eighth and seventh are really controls. And then those additional taps on basic and what that does for each of their abilities, it really ties them together. Got it. Got it. Last team we've got here, and this is an interesting one. Uh, we're, we're matching up the, uh, we, we're creating the Sion Republic. Uh, so Boba Fett, Sion of Django lead with Mission and Zelba. Um Again, Omicrons in this don't really matter uh, because they're territory war based as well. Uh, but Mission and Zelba, well, they can be pretty gross still, can't they? They still do some work over over the years. They've been pretty solid and consistent together. They are a gross team, and they also apply a lot of debuffs, a lot of foresight. Uh, so you're getting somebody on blind. You're getting somebody dazed. You're putting defense down. Well, Sion's going to continue to ramp his damage, and he's continued to hit. And it doesn't matter if you're a uh, bounty hunter or a scoundrel. Well, Mission and Zal are an amazing duo combo. And they, you don't, don't even need a lead to do damage, right? People will do Nest, Mission, and Zalvar, and that's mm-hmm. a great team. Well, now you put Boba Fett, who's ramping and continuing to be ramped up. I, I think it's going to go a long way. And when you try to kill Boba Fett, Zal's going to come up and taunt. Yeah, he's he's going to get reactive, gonna get and he's going to sit there. Yeah. Right. And then as you're doing that, Boba Fett is continuing to push that team along. So it's just building another one building that's off the yeah. wall. And what are you doing with them anyway? That's the other piece where I was like, this would be yeah. a great team to mess with. Yeah. And offense or defense, I think people are going to sleep on it and they're going to underestimate it and they're not going to bring enough. And then Mission and Zalbar are going to take your team out while Boba Fett's continuing to ramp his speed. I like it. I like it, mate. Mate, that's some fantastic, fantastic teams. Uh, so we, we can quickly just go over them again uh, with the quirky ones, just as a bit of a recap, if you would like. So Secret Plan, so it's Macbar teams with Leia and R2, Akbar with Leia and uh, and Ahsoka Fulcrum, of course, uh, New Hope team, Akbar, Leia, and CLS, and also Akbar, Leia, and Scarif. We've got Luck Abantha, so of course, the Tuscans are going to get some love. Uh, Krennic, one out of the box, Death Trooper and Night Sister, or also you can use Death Trooper and Short Trooper as another combination. Omicrons are essential, otherwise won't work. Shock Prods, Finn, Poe, and Rose Tico. Enough said, we'll move on from that. She's had enough love already in this video, dead set. Uh, Barris. <laughs> Uh, with the Zeta, of course, Star Killer with the Omicrons and Darth Malak, really tanky. If you can get him up there, that's going to be pretty gross. And then the non-Omicron options, Basti with Ezra and Kanan, uh, Gideon with Death and Stormtrooper, and then of course, when it comes to the Inquisitors, Fifth Brother, Seventh Sister, and Ninth Sister, and then the Trilla Purge team, so Second Sister, Seventh, and Eighth, going there as well together, finishing off with the Scion Republic. Boba, Mission, and Zelba. Man, some real interesting theory crafting there. I'm really looking forward to the comments and, you know, getting ideas on on what people think about these teams as well. But other teams that we haven't even thought about, that's something that I'm going to be really super oh, yeah. excited about too. So, uh, mate, look, just before we go, can, can you give anyone, obviously, because we're, we're all, you know, we're all going in blind, right? We're all going in dry, so to speak. That's the best way to put it. Um, so... Any, any any idea on tips when it comes to, you know, it's, it's going to be tricky to scout your opponent, but anything to look out for when it comes to preparing, you know, for the first week especially before we can get some sort of history? I, I think what people want to take into account is that as much as you don't know is as much as your opponent doesn't know either. No one knows what they're doing, and it's going to be trying to fill it back out, um, especially if you do or don't like threes, um, what you want to tie into it's just play to your strengths and then play to some of the ideas that you're aware of. Right. So anything you remember, if, if it's go back to old school and like, these are the things that worked in threes before just to fill out where everybody's at, because I, I guarantee you, we're all going to sit here. We're all going to go, yes, this worked. No, it didn't. There's streams that are going on. Heinz is going to do his, there's all these streamers looking at it and everybody's just going to be observe, observe, observe. Yeah. And then after that first week, 
what did everybody use? What worked? What didn't work? Because you have Omicrons that are new. We have characters that are new. Everything has changed. There's all these uh, characters geared up now. Tuscans are being made to be made great again. And, and so it's, it's, what are you going to, who knows? Yeah. So just take it slow and just look at everything from that point of view. And then if you're scouting your opponent, if you see a habit of something they like to use nine times out of 10, they're just going to take out two characters and use that again on you. I like it. I like it. I think TJ, I think what would be a really good idea is after week one, we'll of course be doing this uh, next week on Monday again. Monday's with TJ yep. here, 9.30 Eastern uh, in the US and of course in Australia, about 11.30 in the evening here on Mondays. Um, the, the the link's below, guys. Jump in the Discord server. You'll get a ping when we go live. Don't miss that. Get over there. It's a crazy server. Lots of crazy meme competitions and all sorts of stuff going on lately. You don't want to miss it. But uh, that's it. I think we need to maybe revisit this again next week. How about how about we do another one and a bit of a follow-up and see if the, the, yeah. those comps that we just came up with really work well or something else we didn't think of is like, wow, that one's really, really super awesome. What oh, I, there, there, there's guarantee we're going to see some. The, the first week is going to open up a lot of doors for people in one we see you so yeah i like it i'll I be like down it. always I like down. it thank you so much tj it's been great mate can you yeah. give us can you give us a tj flex on the way out come on mate for the video can you give us a tj right, flex we can one of Oh, holy shamali. If I had him, I'd be doing that too all day long, guys. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, please. Hit that follow button. Under 400. Under 400 subs to hit 10K. We need everyone's help to get over that line. Thank you so much. TJ, you're a superstar. It's been great to have you on, guys. Uh, of oh, course, hit comments below. Really, really want to hear your insight. Who's excited about 3v3? Who cannot wait for it to be finished? Let us know what you guys think because I'm sure everyone's going to have their own opinions on it. But, hey, like it or not, you're going to have to play it because you need crystals. That's basically where the game's at these days. We'll see you guys a week from now. We'll be back, of course, on Thursday, studying our 3v3s with the Knight Brothers uh, oh, on, yeah. uh, on the US uh, Thursday morning. And then, of course, don't forget the Gridzy with a special guest. TJ will be joining us. And, of course, I believe we're going to have, because Grid's going to be unavailable, he's going to be overseas, we're going to have a- AP Gaines joining us as well as a co-host. So I'm super, super excited about that. You're not going to want to miss that one. This coming week, it's going to be massive. See you guys. Love you. Bye.